Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really full this morning, and just from the time of prayer, from my pep- preparation, um, the prayer time this morning, the prayer call, worship, I'm, I'm just so full. And, and as I was sitting there, and then what you did with communion, I'm just like, oh, my goodness. And, and, and I, I can honestly just sit here and worship the rest of the time. I mean, honestly, that's what I could do. But there's a word that God has given. And, and so and I'm, I'm going to be obedient to this word because... Um, this may not be what you want to hear today. And it, it, it may make you upset. Okay? Um, you know, and, and I, <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, because I'm challenged with the commission from last week. Um, I'm challenged, you know, as I reflect on my own life, but I'm also challenged for even us as a church as I look over this word. And anytime I've read this passage that we're going to look at, um, I've often been a little bit, you know, I'll just say challenged again, you know, to the point of like, why is this here? You know, um, but yet the commission, I can't get past the fact that there's an urgency. She mentioned that last week. Where's the urgency? Where's the urgency of us living this out? You know, where's the urgency of being a disciple? You know, we had so many different conversations back and forth of, where's the next level of ministers? Where are the people that are jumping to say, you know, I want to serve in ministry? Where are the people that, jump, that are jumping to say that, Corey, uh, Pastor Corey, I want to be like you. I want, how, how do I get in the word like you? Where, where are the people? Where is that? You know, after coming back from Uganda, there, you know, there's people that are, that are still in contact with me. I, I got one young man, he constantly is just like, Pastor Corey, whatever you're teaching, please tell me what it is. I want to research it in the Word myself. And I'm like, man, I, where, where, where are those people here? Where, where's, the, where's the urgency that I want to know God, like you do, there's, in other words, Pastor Corey, there's something going on inside of me, and I want your assistance to help me get to wherever God's trying to take me. Where's the urgency? And, and so even as I minister this word today, you know, I, I want you to be under the grace of God. Okay? Um, this, is, this is no attack. There's no anger. I, I'm just trying to ask questions, and I'm just trying to Get some answers. Because we cannot go into 2023 the same. Hallelujah. I'm I'm praying that God would stir us. That there would be something inside of us. Even after this word today, may something be stirred that that we would take action of some sort. And, and, And just so everybody knows, I'm not looking for it to be the same. God has uniquely designed each one of you, so something's going to be stirred inside of you that you need to do. Some of you, it's already been happening, and you just haven't said yes yet. And so I'm hoping to push you today into that yes, whatever it might be. Praise the Lord. Are we together? You remember how Pastor Harry used to do that? And he used to say, you know, can y'all just tell me you love me? And and even if you don't, I'm going to be all right because I'm going to stand in the authority of Christ today. Praise the Lord. I'm okay with rejection today. So I'm all right. I'm all right. So let's get into the word. Everybody, let's go to the book of Luke. Bought me a new Bible. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's nice, too. Look at that. Yeah. Big print. Look at this big word. Praise the Lord. (laughs) I needed it. Glory be to Jesus. (laughs) We're going to go to Luke chapter 9, and this is going to be um, verses 57 through 62, okay? And so as, uh, as I read it, you know, just allow the Lord to minister to you. If you don't have a Bible, we can make sure that you get one. Anybody need a Bible? Um, Because we can get you one if you don't have one, okay? Uh, Because we need, definitely need to make sure that we get into this. Okay, need a Bible over here. Okay, Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 57, okay? Uh, Praise God. Here we go. 
As they were going on the road, somebody said to him, Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the sky have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. But he said to him, allow the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim where the kingdom of God, everywhere the kingdom of God. Another also said, I will follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye to those at my home. But Jesus said to him, no one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Let me just pray one more time. Father, I just ask, Lord God, for your clarity and your wisdom, Father, as we take this word and understand it and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I, you know, I was really, you know, just kind of just like, okay, God, what are, what are we going to do with this? You know, we get this commission. We, we see all this excitement of what happened in, in Uganda. And, and it's not just supposed to happen in Uganda. It's supposed to be happening all over the world. It's supposed to be happening here in Waukegan, here in Gurnee. Here it's supposed to be happening here in Lake County. You know, this explosion of people that are excited about the gospel. There's supposed to be an excitement about this thing that is in our lives that has transformed us. And so we have this commission in us as far as are we going to go? You know, and it wasn't just, are you going to go on the mission? The question is, are you going to do what God has called you to do? Okay? Some people were stirred even from last week's message that, hey, I'm going to get busy doing what the Lord has called me to do. But where's the rest of that? Because this is an everybody thing. Everybody that's in this room that is calling themselves a born-again believer, the commission is on you to go. And that goal is simply, let me walk as a disciple of Christ. We are all called to be disciples. Each one of us that said yes to Jesus, we have become a disciple. Let me give you some context of what, is, what has happened here. Um, Jesus had already sent out the 12, and he sent them out to go preach the gospel. Okay, they went out and preached the gospel. He told them, don't take a bag, don't take anything. If they don't receive you, wipe the dust off your feet and keep pushing. Move on to somewhere else. And they came back and they gave, God the, gave Jesus the report and, and, and everything was good and they celebrated and rejoiced. Then they continued on. There were several other things that had happened. Um, then uh, P- they asked Peter, you know, Peter, what are, the, what, are you, what are they saying about me? What are people saying that I, I am? You know, and that's when he said, thou art the Christ. So that whole thing happened. And this is all in Luke chapter chapter 9. But if we push a little bit forward, now he's going into other ministries. It says in in, in, uh, verse 51 that he was compelled to go to Jerusalem. He wanted to go to Jerusalem. So he's on, he says, I'm going to go, but I'm going to send some messengers ahead. He sends the messengers ahead into the area of Samaria, and they, uh, and the people in Samaria did not receive them. Disciples, those two that he sent, they came back, and he said, the the disciples said to Jesus, do you want me to call down fire because they would not receive you? Jesus turns around and rebukes them and then doesn't deal with it. I thought that was very interesting. He rebukes them because judgment is not the time right now. This is not the time to look at sinful people and say, I can't wait for y'all to burn in hell. Because I know that's sometimes what we're thinking. You know, as we see different things happening on the news, as we see different issues going on, it's just like they need to just burn in hell. And there's an attitude that's in the American church right now that is so condemning that the love of Christ cannot be seen. But yet here Jesus shows us this is not the time for condemning. This is not the time to sit down and rain down hell on people and condemn them. This is the time and the invitation to bring people into the gospel. And he tells his disciples, I've called you into that. So in other words, there will be rejection. If you're going to follow me, get ready for the rejection. 
Not everybody is going to like the fact that you're nice. Not everybody's going to like the fact that you're giving. Not everybody's going to like the fact that you're serving. Get ready for the rejection. Today's message has to do with count the cost of what you said yes to. The urgency of being a disciple. This is a little bit tough because we're very comfortable. I, I, I understand I'm not coming for you. I, I'm not. The Holy Spirit is coming for you. I'm not. I, I'm not coming for you. You know, and, and, and I don't, uh, believe me, my heart today, because I want to get this right too. But we've been sitting in such comfortability that we're fine with, with how services are. We're fine with just this. I can't stand it. I, 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 can't, I can't stomach it. Where are we going? What are we doing? I don't want to come back from Uganda and just feel like, man, I would rather stay in Uganda. And it, because God has called us together to do something great. So it excites me and Pastor Jason when you have an idea, I believe God wants me to do X, Y, and Z, and I'm just like, let's go. It's time. I don't have to tell you to do a whole bunch of stuff. But because of the, the disciple inside of you, it's just like, I've got to go. See, that's urgency. i got to do it. Okay? Let's look into this, the passage. So here we are in Luke chapter 9, and we have three different scenarios where Jesus is telling disciples there's a cost that comes with following me. And he just wants to let them know, after I've rejected and rebuked you for, for trying to call down fire, let me understand, let me help you understand that there is a cost in being my disciple. Scene 1, 2, and 3. Here we go. Scene number 1. Verse 57. As they were going on the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting how we can, you know, be going on in the crowd, and, and, I, and I'm just imagining Jesus, they're all walking along, and, uh, and, and one of the people that's with him is like, yeah, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus is just like, wait a minute. Let me help you see something. While you're sitting there saying, I will follow you wherever you go. I'm glad that you want to, but count the costs. Look at the life I lead. The foxes have holes, and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. This life of a disciple has to be one that you're ready to follow the same path that Jesus followed. In other words, I'm hanging on to life loosely. Okay? You know, we, 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 we do a lot to make sure that we got that nice nest egg of money. You know, we do a lot of these things to just make sure that we're nice and secure. But what Jesus is saying here is that I'm holding on to life loosely. I am just a sojourner. And it brought to mind as I read this verse, you know, my life is not my own. It doesn't belong to me. How many of us can get to that place where it's just like, Jesus, you're right. My life is not my own. So I, I'm going to hold loosely. And, and, and I have to hold loosely to the point that I'm okay with my kids. Because a lot of us are living for our children. We're not living for Christ. We're living for our children. I'm not coming for you. I really am not. But honestly... We're trying to make everything good so that our children are secure. But yet, the call for us to be a disciple is out there, and we said yes, but yet we'll make sacrifices of the gospel for the sake of making sure our kids are okay. The foxes have holes. The birds have nests. But Jesus has nowhere to lay his head. He hangs on the things loosely. See, for, see, this was a different relationship that they were clinging to. This was a relationship of, because of, typically in the Jewish culture, the, they, the student sees the rabbi and says, Rabbi, can I come and be with you? 
But here's this, the scenario is different. It's like the Old Testament prophets where the prophets could go, could go anywhere. And are you ready to go anywhere? Counting the cost of the disciple, are you ready to go anywhere? Are you ready to do things that might be uncomfortable? Are you ready? Or, or are we in a position where it's just like, well, let me, let me, let me retire, and then, then I'll be good to serve you, Jesus? Please, please understand, I've had to reason with this. That's why I said I'm not gunning for you. I've had to reason with this myself. Because even being in full-time ministry, it's just like there's, there's a level of like, you know, I, I work hard. I'd be too tired to be doing some other stuff. And it's just like, well, Jesus, he was constantly on the move. Are we ready to be constantly on the move? And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to move somewhere or that you, it's, it's being obedient, Period. There's a faithfulness and there's a devotion and there's a loyalty that disciples must have. A disciple has to be bound to God and his will, which is why the word that you preached before in John 15 is if you, you know, it, it being the vine, you know, and being hooked into the vine. It, it, we have to be there. We have to be bound. That's what a disciple was doing. A, di a disciple, uh, when they were following a teacher, they said, I am willing to leave everything to go follow you. So I'm leaving mom, I'm leaving dad, I'm leaving everything to go follow you because you have something that I want to learn. You have something that I want to experience. And then the teacher is going to challenge you to go and do the same thing. And I think sometimes we're in love with the philosophy of it. Oh, yeah, it's a good philosophy. That's really good. But the reality of it is, what does that look like for me in my life? And I think too many times, even in our American culture, we've, we've let the, 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 the pageantry of church be the thing, be the celebration. You know, you came into Christ, you got saved, let me join the choir, let me join the usher you know, and it's just like this has become my journey of being a disciple. No. I know that goes against everything church. And, and I'm glad to say it online, whoever's watching. This goes against everything church. Because some of us in, in Christian, I don't even want to call it Christendom. Some of us in religiondom, we, we live for choir. We live for the choir. We live for the shout. We live for, you know, just the big buildings. We live for all of that. And that's the extent of whatever we want to call it. When Jesus says, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but there is nowhere for Jesus to lay his head because he's constantly on the move. He's constantly doing the will of the Father. I'm challenging us for 2023. Are we ready to make that commitment? Are we ready to make that commitment that because of the, the, that I'm bound to God and his will, there's things that God is calling me to do, and I'm willing to go and do it. And that me and Pastor Jason, we're able to come and celebrate you because you're saying yes to God and his will. Just a thought. 2023 holding on to life loosely, and that my comfort is uncertain. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't, Jesus was one that didn't complain, but if you really read and just look through the different things, he could have. He could have complained about so many different things, these knucklehead disciples that have been assigned to him. He could have complained. He could have complained about, you've got to travel in the boat. We're talking about somebody that was, that was part of creation. We're talking about somebody that, that created all these beautiful things in the earth, and all of a sudden he has to come down, and now he's sleeping in a boat. He 
could have complained. He could have complained that he's not getting any sleep because he's constantly preaching, that everywhere he goes, a crowd gathers around him. He could have complained. Somebody, some of us complain because of that one person that wants to come and talk to us and, and consume our time. It's like, oh, here he come. Are we willing to do that type of life? 2023, we got to make some changes. And, and, and I love what Sonia told me. It's like, we got three more weeks in 2022. Let it start now. Let it start now. Praise the Lord. Turn to Matthew. I'm going to just go quickly through these passages. Matthew chapter 12. This is the account. And, and some of this stuff is just really hard to even stomach that he would even say this. But it, this is the cost. Here he goes talking about relationships. You know, somebody said to him, you know, hey, here's your mother and your brother. You know, and, and Jesus replied in verse 47. He, uh, your verse 47. He said, look. Uh, somebody said, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak to you. Verse 48, but Jesus replied to the one who was telling him and said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And extending his hand towards his disciples, he said, behold, my mother and my brothers. Verse 50, for whoever does the will of my father who is in heaven, he is my brother and he is my sister and my mother. I don't know, we don't deal with these verses. Because we're just like, wow, this seems like a harshness of Jesus. But it's not. He's expressing this is the cost. Not everybody in your family is going to be happy about your decision to follow Jesus. And are you ready for that? This is a challenge from Jesus. This is not a condemnation. This is a challenge. Count the cost when you say the kingdom things that I'm calling you into, it's going to be beyond family. There'll be ministry to your family. I mean, God can do anything. There's anything. But are you willing to even go, even at the expense of family? Father, we thank you for your word. John chapter 4, Apostle Deborah had mentioned this about Jesus when he was talking to the woman at the well, and, and all, all of a sudden the woman left, and she went to go uh, minister to the people in the community, and the disciples came back, and, and they were just like, you know, hey, Jesus, uh, we, you need to eat. Here's another place where he could have complained. You know, it's like, Jesus, you need to eat. And, uh, and then Jesus says in, in verse 34, Look at what he says here, chapter 4, verse 34. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. A disciple of Jesus is going to be at that place where this is my food. This, my, my nourishment comes from doing his will. You know, and, and I, I am not a Scrooge. I am not, uh, what's the other guy that stole Christmas? I am not Grinch. Okay, but I'm going to tell you something. If I don't get all happy about the festivities of Christmas, it's not because of, of being a Grinch or anything like that. It's because of the gospel. I'm not worried about gifts. I'm not, and, and, and please, I'm not denying anything that you may want to give. My kids ask me, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? I, I don't know. I, I really, I, I, it's not the high priority for me. And not because I'm all righteous and things like that, okay? But there's a priority that's above even this. Praise the Lord. I, yeah, I, I know. It's, 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 it's tough. It's tough. John chapter 6, verse 38. God, why are you having me stay on this so long? I was supposed to be on this. Chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is challenging because a lot of us, you know, we said yes to Jesus, but we still want to build our own homes. We still want to build our own kingdoms and, and everything. And it's just like looking at Jesus he said, my will is to do the will of the Father. 
And so that means we have to be bound in the scriptures where we are challenged in our own lives of, God, okay, I got to let go of my stuff. If I'm not willing to let go of my stuff, then it's like I'm not really willing to be a disciple. To be a disciple means I'm letting go. We sing that song, Lord, I long to see you glorified in everything I do. All my heartfelt dreams, I, do y'all, do y'all listen to what we sing? That's why I know some of us don't sing it, because you don't want to be held accountable. All my heartfelt dreams, I put aside to see your spirit move with power. Uh. You know, and yet we put things in place, we make decisions to pursue our dreams, but lied and worship. See, the thing is, is that I, I, I'm a product of this because, you know, there were dreams that I had, and it wasn't to be a pastor. And to all of you that just had that need of, I want to be a pastor, I did not. I wanted to be on stage. Well, look. You know, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to be conducting symphonies. I mean, so I, my plans got changed when I encountered Jesus. And, 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 and it wasn't a magical one-moment thing. It was the process of becoming a disciple that changed my desires so that I, my wants are his wants. Church, we are challenged. What are we going to do with this? Let's move on. Scene number two. Here's the scenario where it wasn't somebody that said, I will follow you. Here's the scenario where Jesus actually says to the person, follow me. It's a beautiful invitation that he's given to all of us. And Jesus says to this disciple, follow me. Let's look at this. And he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, allow the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. I looked at this and I was just like, okay, God, this is yet another tough one. There's a challenge here to each one of us to recognize the priority of the gospel in our lives, that the gospel is more important. Now, dealing with the text directly, the text directly talks about the fact that the dead need to bury their own dead. And so there's the conversation between commentators that it's talking about those that are spiritually dead. Let them go handle the business of burial. Because in the Jewish culture, burial is a large responsibility. But if you're going to be my disciple, let those that don't know me, let them take care of it. You go proclaim the gospel. This is if you want to follow me. Now, if you want to be on the outskirts, do what you want to do. But if you're going to be a disciple, there's a priority that goes beyond. I know we're challenged. I'm seeing it in your faces. I know. I know. The work of discipleship is a priority even over the cares of this life. See, a disciple cannot be overcome by the worries of life. You know, I, I'm grateful for uh, The Chosen um, and how they've been doing the different series, and, and season three is now out. You know, and it just kind of is really cool to just see how those disciples really engaged Christ and how those disciples engaged one another. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and start with uh, season one and, and get moving in it. But it's a really awesome picture just to see what those disciples gave up and how they were challenged, even in their relationship with one another, of what does this look like to really be a disciple of Christ? And yet here again is the same thing. There's an invitation to us to really look at our priorities. 
the priority of the gospel over the cares of this life. The cares of this life, I mean, hey, this is Christmas season, you know, and there's a lot going on. You know, um, and, and I'm going to say this, and, and, and I, uh, there might be some issues with my family, but I, I think we'll be okay. I'm, I'm walking in authority today, so um, I'm going to choose my words carefully. Praise, praise the Lord. So, you know, I, I, there's, there's a blessing that comes our way as a family, you know, and, and the opportunity to go to Disney, you know, and for whatever reason um, in life, we feel like that, you know, I need my family to experience Disney. You know, I need my family to experience, you know, this or that, you know, and I'm grateful for the gift. But honestly, if my family never experienced Disney, I'm okay. The priority for me is to make sure that my kids know Jesus. And like I said, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for the gifts. But if we never go to Disney, I'm fine. My kids are fine. Because I've introduced them to Jesus. That is the priority. And I say this humbly, I say this with grace, but the priority is the gospel. If my kids never experience anything else about the world, we're okay. The priority is the gospel. Do I have this right? Do I have this perfect? No. My kids are getting into their teenage years, so it's getting more and more challenging. And I need y'all prayers as we keep trying to do this. But I want my kids to be disciples. I, I, I don't want them to have the yearnings of the world. And, and they got their own journey, and I, and I keep on telling them that too. You have your own journey that God is doing with you, and, and, and I know that you're going to be traveling that journey. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as me and Shani are concerned, we want to make sure that you know who Jesus is that is the priority. All these other things, they're going to fade away. Disney is going to burn. <laughs> please don't take that out of context. Any of you online, please. I do not want to be in trouble, but I'm okay. I'm standing in the authority of Christ. To be rejected is the life. And I'm going to tell you something. There's nothing wrong with your vacations or anything like that. My question is, is while you're on your vacation, are your kids experiencing Jesus? While you do your travels, while you do your, your, your getaways, are they encountering Jesus? Because if it's not going to be about that, then what are you doing? If you're not going to engage them while you're on the cruise about Christ, what are you doing? This is not condemnation. This is a challenge for what are we going to do? Praise the Lord. Matthew 6, 33, we all know this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew 19, 29, go to that one right quick so I don't have to I look for it. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms on account of my name, look at this, will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. See, as much as he challenges us on what the cost is for being a disciple, he also encourages us is that there's more on the other end. There's a lot more on the other end if we can just stay the course. There's a lot more. You get eternal life. And he's going to bless you with more. Whatever you've sacrificed. Whatever you've put on hold. I, I'm so amazed that because the thing is, as an artist, you have to work hard to try and be something. But I'm amazed at the number of times he put me in front of people where I've been able to thrive 
and, and share the gift that God has given me. I've, I've been on stage so much more than I ever thought I could. And all from a yes. That's just my journey. How about you? You as a writer, you as, a, you as a, 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 somebody who operates in finance, how much more would God give because of the sacrifices you made for the sake of the gospel? And not sitting in a place of regret, not sitting in a place of complaint. I had to deal with that. I had to deal with regret as, I, as I'm sitting on the plane watching, you know, uh, there, was a, there was something on the plane, that, and I had told this story before, but there, there was this conductor, and, and he's young, and he's 24, and, and he's, like in, he's from South America or something like that. And I'm just sitting there watching, and just my whole demeanor just began to change because I was just thinking, man, that could have been me. And Apostle Harry, who was sitting next to me, which I was like, ugh, why he got to sit next to me? Now I can't watch what I want to watch. So as he's sitting next to me, he saw my demeanor change, and he began to say to me, ah, don't go there. Don't go there. God has called you for greater. Don't go there. Don't go there. And to each one of us, I say the same thing. Your yes to Jesus, he's going to reward you with more. Don't get there in regret. If you said yes to Jesus, God's got greater for you. You're his child. You said yes. He called you. You said yes. Now you've surrendered and sacrificed much. God's going to reward you. Stay the course. Daniel, stay the course. Sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice. Stay the course. There's reward that God's giving you. Hallelujah. 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 Let me move on. Scene number three. Woo. Mm. This is a weight for real. Luke chapter 9, verse 61. Another also said, I will follow you, Lord, but first permit me to say goodbye to those at my home. But Jesus said to him, no one after putting his hands to the hand plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now, at first onset of this, you know, when you look at just the part that says, I will follow you, but first permit me to say goodbye to those at, at my home, it doesn't seem like it's a bad thing, okay? Then we look at his, Jesus' response. The response, and, you know, I had to study this out. The response is what really lets us know what the deal is. That there are many times that we can go along in our relationship, and if we're not connected, we start to yearn for the past, let me come back to that again. When we're not remaining connected with him, there's the yearnings of the past that start to come back up. And the hand plow, because, and this is what many of the commentators were saying, when you're taking the hand plow, the hand plow, you have to keep facing it because the ground is so rocky, you have to keep moving along with it that if you turn around, you will get off. Let me, let me do it again. The hand plow has to stay steady. It, it, who cuts grass in here? Okay, so if you, I noticed that in cutting grass, because I do my own grass, in cutting grass, if I turn away, all of a sudden my line is crooked. Let me just make it plain for us, because we don't have rocky, hilly lands. Okay, so making it plain for us, when I turn my head away, I get off. And I like my line straight. Okay? Because I do the little diax design, you know. It's therapeutic for me doing grass, okay? I'm telling you, I can think, it's, I love it, okay? So, and I'm not coming to do yours. I know the Lord going to tell me, go, now go do it, because you didn't say it. So, but, you know, I, I have to stay focused, and, and, I, and I notice that when drivers go by, they're honking at me, and I'm just like, He says that anyone that looks back, you're not fit for the kingdom. If you're not willing to be a 
focused disciple. In other words, the disciples cannot be vacillating up and down. I'm a victim today, you know, and, and, and I don't know if I'm, I'm saved. And, you know, you know how we do. But the disciple has to be one that says, I am focused. I'm staying the course. No matter what comes. Because we can get some doozies now. Some doozies of family situations that, that can come. And, and, and I, that's why I'm grateful for the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ can help us stay on task. The body can help us, hey, remain the course. Apostle Harry would always say, stay on course. Some of us are challenged in our walk. Maybe because of COVID, maybe because of different things, and we've settled in a comfort level that is starting to make discipleship look like it's a hobby. So my, you know, the, the staying on top of my relationship is on my own terms. So therefore, I, I can control the thermostat of if I'm going to be hot today or if I'm going to be cold, you know, because discipleship has not become the commitment. It's hard for us to fill this church with people when we're not filled. When we're not convinced of our own disciple, our, our own choice of being a disciple. So therefore, churches in America, I won't make it general so nobody feels like I'm attacking them. So therefore, churches in America are filled with people that are on the outskirts. This, this is just the crowd that was following. So our churches are filled with crowds. But where are the disciples? Because as long as I'm in the crowd, I control how much I'm going to give. I control how much I'm going to serve. I control how deep I really want to go with regards to the Bible. So we're challenged. We have this commission before us. I'm looking to see that there would be more churches raised up. I'm looking to see that there would be more ministries birthed. This is not just me. This is both me and Pastor Jason. We're looking to see that the ministry, the vision that God called Apostle Harry and Deborah to, that that vision that they were given, we're looking to see this thrive. I'm not, I'm not worried about the numbers because what I'm concerned about is let's get out, let's get the disciples out. Okay, because the numbers will come when the disciples go out. But as long as we're comfortable with just gathering, as long as we're comfortable with just this place, this is all we're going to get. I'm pushing young people to start teaching. Tyson is downstairs right now teaching the young people. Because we need to reproduce what it looks like to be a disciple. I'm challenging children, you be the people of prayer. I'm challenging children, you be the people to give words of encouragement. I'm challenging all of them in this space because, God, we need to reproduce disciples. Okay? So it's time out for just sitting still. So you saw my comment back to you, right? And I don't know if you was playing or not, but you saw my comment back to you. Praise the Lord. I love you, man. One day, one day, and we'll have that Barry White voice right up here. Amen. But let's not play with it. If you said yes to Jesus, then let's go. That means you got to make it, a, you got to account, figure out what that's going to look like. This is a call for a lifetime. It's not clinging to the ways of the world. But it's a focused relationship. Luke 9, I'm going to end with this. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 through 20, 26. 
And he was saying to them all, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, this is the one who will save it. For what good does it do a person if he gains the whole world but loses or forfeits, and the King James Version says, his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory, in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. As I, said, as I said at the top of this, this is a period of opportunity and invitation. The expressions of, of God's love, he's very patient. Okay? And so then that means while this place of patience is there, while the grace is there, let's be participants in giving out the invitation. There's some challenges I want to give to you. What does this look like? What does this look like in our lives? What needs to change? You know, for some of us, it's going to be a rededication of our own life to following Jesus. Some of us are convicted even right now. It's like, okay, Jesus, I'm really not following you. And I'm going to tell you something. There's no judgment. There's no judgment right now. And I'm so grateful because if there was, a lot of us would be in trouble. There's no judgment right now. Jesus saying, come. If you messed up, come. If you weren't following me and you're making that choice, come. Let's go. Somebody said to me yesterday, Pastor Corey, you're always so encouraging. Yep, that, that's where I got to be. You want to go jump off a roof? I'll try and stop you. But if that's what you want to do. Maybe it's a rededication of your life. Maybe it's a heartfelt repentance and renouncing of sin. Maybe some of us are sitting in this place right now. It's just like, I've got a lot of sin going on. Okay, repent. Renounce the stuff. And let's go. Jesus is not, you know, standing over you with a hammer saying, you better get it together. No, he's saying, come on, repent. Come to me. Repent. Repent. Let's go. Because there's so much more I want to do with you. Let's go. There's people that need your voice. Let's go. Maybe it's uh, uh, looking at reorganizing your life around his will. Taking your hand off the thermostat and let him control the thermostat. Really looking at what's going on in your life. What priorities have you already laid out for 2023? Does it have anything to do with the will of God? What does 2023 look like? There's plans that's been laid out for us, and I just shake my head. I'm just like, this ain't it. It's just stuff I wrestle with. What are we investing in? What what is this? We can discern through it together. If there's stuff that's going on, let's talk. Schedule time with Pastor Jason. Schedule time with Minister Sonia. Schedule time with Shine. Let's talk. Schedule time with me. Let's sit down and let's let's reason through it together. You don't have to do it by yourself. Some of us are very much challenged. Kevin, you can go ahead and play. Because if you don't, I'll talk some more. Whatever the case is, you know the conviction that God has been placing on your heart today. You know it. You're sitting on it. Those of you online, you know the conviction that's happening in your heart. You know that there are things in your life that you really need to let go of for the sake of the gospel. You know. There are different things that are happening in preparation for 2023 that I want to let you know about, that there's ways that we are are able to really work on this process of being a disciple. I mean, we can go back to our our whole core situation here because this is where it's centered at. 
And I'm going to start with how are we being rooted? How are we being rooted together in the gospel? How are we staying connected, staying connected with him? How are we, how are we driving near? Because if I'm going to be a disciple, the actual definition of disciple is that I'm a learner. I'm a pupil. So if you're not aggressively in your word trying to understand Jesus, I really have to question if you're being a disciple. So I, I'm just going to say this in the authority that I'm in, and not because I'm trying to be all prideful, but in the authority that I'm standing in, let's get in the gospel. There's no excuses. There's no reason why we are not in our word. None whatsoever. But I, I'm sorry. There is a reason. You're not a disciple. So I get it. And, and, and no condemnation. But count the cost. I'm sure with Jesus, when he talked to those three, there was no condemnation. He just had to make it known. Before you say yes to me, count the cost. Because if you're not ready to give up your life for the sake of the gospel, then don't do it. But in your not doing it, you're missing out. You're missing out on my forgiveness. You're missing out on my grace. You're missing out on my blessing. You're missing out on the promise that I've made for all of humanity. There's stuff that's happening. Write this date down, January 2nd through the 7th. We're going to be connected and rooting ourselves together by doing the first fruits fasting. This church, January 2nd through the 7th, we are fasting. Fasting and praying. Why? We want to be connected with him. It's not a tradition. It's not a thing. It's, it's an importance that for us to cleanse ourselves of everything else and start off the year being more connected with him. We are fasting. January 2nd through the 7th. There's no argument in this. If you call yourself a disciple, you will be fasting. If you're not a disciple, that's fine. I don't want no deacon, no minister giving condemnation on anybody. If you're not a disciple, that's fine. But those of you that are disciples, let's go. January 2nd through the 7th. And then on the 7th, we're going to be in here worshiping and praying together. That's Friday. Friday night at 7 p.m. Oh, we, I thought you said 7. Oh, I'm sorry, the date. Okay, yes, my fault. Second through the six, and then the six we're going to be together in prayer at 7 p.m. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Next thing, how are you arranging in this place of being rooted, how are you arranging your devotionals? Some of us may have started and we got off. Get your devotional together. Get on Amazon right now. Everybody else, look, there's such a concern about all these gifts that we're buying. Have you bought your devotional yet? priorities. What is the devotional that I'm getting into? If you own the Bible app, what Bible version are you going to be using to be going through the year? And get me on it so I can hold you accountable. Because look, in my household, my, we are on separate devotionals. She has what she does. I have what I do. And then we challenge the kids on having theirs. Okay? Everybody's doing a devotional. We got Jessa one too. Okay? And we just got to get the other kid to read to her, you know, because she's still learning how to read. But everybody's doing something. If you call yourself a disciple, what is the devotional that you're doing? Have you made preparations for that? Have you made, if you need help, ask me. Because I need to be under his authority and under his word. Amen. Connected to him. Debbie Stackhouse, she just published her book, Loving Leviticus. This is hers. Praise the Lord. Debbie Stackhouse, uh, who's uh, the niece of, uh, of Apostle 
Harry, this is her book. And you know she loves Leviticus. And interesting enough, calling it Loving Leviticus. And um, this is a great study. And I love what she said. Do you have that video ready? Okay, good. Let's watch the video real quick. Just hold on, Kevin. Make sure the volume's on. There she is. Unmute it. Oh, I don't know if you know how to. Okay. Anyway, we'll make sure that it's posted, okay? But this is her book. It would be a great devotional for you to do, okay? Get together with a group of people. Do the devotional together. Just study together. It's not a devotional. It's a study. Going through the book of Leviticus. And I love what she said, that this is the voice of God for now. This study with Leviticus. Do you have it? To do the, is, it, is it ready to go? Because I love what she said. Okay, don't worry about it. I'll post it. Next thing, um, I want to talk about what Latay is doing. Okay? Um, Latte has her ministry coming. If you could just go ahead and talk about it real quick. Okay? Sign up for it because these are the ways that God is going to keep us focused, okay, on what he's designed. Praise the Lord. So um, Latte and two of her best friends every year do a vision board, like, gathering together. And they decided this year that they wanted to ex- create an event for it so that they could um, expand the experience for other women. And so what it actually is, is that they call it, they're calling it setting the tone of vision board experience. But what we're going to be doing is having worship and prayer to try to ignite and inspire us to hear from the Lord for what he wants us to do in 2023. And so I'll be leading worship. It is on January 30th in Milwaukee, which is a Friday. And then on Sunday, the very the first, we will not have church, but in the afternoon, they're going to have it hosted at the Mosaic Hub. Um, there will be worship. There will be a time of um, hors d'oeuvres and stuff at the end. Um, but where you will hear from God, you will seek God so that you can hear, what is he doing? What is he saying to me? They'll provide some of the materials. They're asking you to provide some materials. There's more information in the back. But you will create a vision board so that you can lay it out before yourself for the year of 2023 of what God is inviting you into. So it's time with Jesus. All of what Pastor Corey was saying, hearing what he's asking, hearing what he's challenging me to do, and getting on board so I can be about it. Amen. So laying out your calendar for the priorities of God. So in other words, I'm trying to get all the dates so it's like, so that I've got kingdom things in mind. What did you want to say? A vision board for the women, okay? So then there's an announcement for the men. Now, this is all in the context of being a disciple. The men are going to be getting together for a winter retreat, okay, where I'm going to be speaking. Pastor Mike Razek's going to be speaking. Pastor Jason's going to be speaking. Gathering the men for the men's retreat. That is going to look at the dates, the 27th through the 29th. I need to be in the place where I can be discipled. And so, therefore, these type of things become a priority. You know, it concerns me. My son is on baseball, and, 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 and some of you have contributed to his baseball. It's a lot of money. And I'm just like, man, this stuff is just way too much. But yet, this is the stuff that he's gifted in. But I'm also willing to make the sacrifices for him to go to winter camp. Winter camp with Journey Church. And so it's just like, we're going to make that investment. Because I need to invest in your spirit, man. So even for us as men, this is going to be, a, it's, a, it's a winter retreat. It's $150. It's an investment that we need to, need to make, okay? And if you're just like, I don't have $150, but I want to be a disciple, we're going to get you there. And you're going to pay something. We ain't paying for the whole thing. You're going to pay something. Something. Okay? Because you got to put some skin in the game. Too many times, we've, we've, the American church has, has perpetuated this attitude. 
It's just like, no. If you're a disciple, give. Give what you got. Each person. What, what did you say? Equal sacrifice. Men's retreat. Let's go. I know I sound harsh and everything, but let's go. Let's, it's time out. Let's go. We got to get things done. Let's go. Next thing. Who are the three to five people that you are, that, that God is putting on your heart that need Jesus? See, we're not thinking in this way. Who are the three to five people in the month of January? Let's just start with January. Who are the three to five people in the month of January that you're going to put on your heart that you're going to be praying for and then being intentional about giving the gospel to? Put a number on it. Put the names on it. Okay? I've already got my two to three that I'm praying for. I've already sent them messages. You know, with the death of Twitch and everything, it got me thinking that I need to call them. And so I, I started making several different phone calls after seeing that information because I'm just like, I don't want you to ha leave this earth and you haven't heard the gospel message. See, as a disciple, I need to make it a priority that there's people in my life that I am giving the message to. That's what disciples do. Next thing, how about serving? In what way are you serving your brothers and your sisters in a more devoted way? How about the youth? How about the children? What does it look like for you to reorganize your life to serve and raise up our children and youth? Some of you that are, are uh, empty nesters, that, you know, you, there's other things. I need help with children. We don't have enough young adults to assign this to. I need help with children. There's people that want ministry during the week, but they can't come to ministry during the week because they have kids or they have to divide the responsibilities. And so one person can come to the study, but the other person can't come to the study because we don't offer anything for children. I can't offer things for children because I don't have no workers. So those of you that are empty nesters or are up there in age, I really need you to reevaluate your life. And how can you serve? How can you serve in this way? I'll train you. I know. It, it, look, this is the sacrifice of discipleship. And Jesus said they're the most precious children. I need help. Believe me, I wish there was like five of me that would go down there and just be with them during the week. We need Wednesday ministry because some people are ready to come here on Wednesday and receive ministry, but they can't because they got kids. For those of us that are empty nesters or don't have that many responsibilities, it's time for us to give up our time and serve. Don't leave it to the young people. You don't see the young they, they, they ain't here. That means it's you. And I guarantee you, when you start serving, you're going to see the help start coming in. Praise the Lord. Another challenge in your giving. Now, I, I thank God because this church has been very good about your giving. But here's the next challenge. What does it look like to support the work of the kingdom? Taking a little bit more, sharing a little bit more, giving a little bit more for the work that's going on. We got these pure love baskets back here. This is part of kingdom work. You know, you can send them off as gifts or whatever, but it's kingdom work. Are we giving in that way? I'm done. As we go into 2023, let's move with an urgency to be a disciple. Let's not let it be a philosophy that hasn't moved from the head to the heart. But whatever the Holy Spirit is revealing to you, let's be obedient and do it. We shall see a harvest like never before. Let's bow our heads. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your grace today. There are ways that we have been challenged. For some of us, it may have made us upset. Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you would just draw our hearts near to you. Help us to be grateful for your saving grace. Help us to be grateful for the work of Jesus. 
but also help us to evaluate, are we going to be a disciple? Is there going to be an urgency in our lives to be a disciple? Lord God, I know I want my life to count. I want it to matter. Everything that we've been doing, I want it to matter. Father, I want, I want, to, I want to see souls come in through my life, Lord. Help us all, Lord God, to reason with you. Lord God, if there's anyone here that needs to recommit, Father, I pray that they would humble themselves before you, rededicate their life to you. Father, you humbly have your arms wide open. God, for your ministry today. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for the conviction. Thank you for shaking me up out of this comfort zone. And I pray for us to walk in urgency. In the mighty name of Jesus.